Hi, it's Wednesday, October 20th, and I continue to read my way through the book of Genesis. I read and I wonder as we begin at the beginning. And we just started this week, so um, so yesterday we got through day three of creation. Uh, we're still in the first chapter of Genesis, so there's vegetation on the earth. Today we're going to get through days four, five, and even into day six in Genesis. So it's Genesis 1, 14 through 25. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. There was evening, there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind of which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground at every kind. And God saw that it was good. I'm going to stop there. Spoiler alert, we're coming next. But I want to stop there. <laughs> um... So, creation continues, and, and, and some of what I have said in the last couple of days, um, I, I feel it even more so. Again, there's, there is a, a progression. Um, you know, it all comes out of water, and the land, and the vegetation, and the animals, and I see them coming out of the water. Um, I mean, this is my high school Darwinian evolution. Uh, and yet, we want to put these things in battle. And I mentioned yesterday, I believe that, that, that this story sings harmony uh, over what we have now discovered through science. Um, but anyway, that's, that's, that was the yesterday, and I, but I, I still find that happening. Um, I love the story. It feels, it just feels good. And I don't think it feels good just because it's like a sentimental children's story. Oh, I remember as a kid hearing this, so I just... Uh, I'm sitting back in Nanny's lap. That's not it. Um, there is a, a beautiful uh, natural flow to this, and it all makes sense to me. Um, I love the, the 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 breathing in and breathing out of it all. You know, like as we get through a, a day of creation, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And yes, that's a storyteller's. Uh, trick it, it it does get the audience breathing with you and it creates a rhythm and it draws us in and it's great but i realize that that is some how the way i need to create my days as well and i know this is not what <laughs> the author of genesis is talking about but when i read this it, there's such a natural flow and a rhythm to it even though this has been you know, uh, written in a language that I do not understand. Um, in fact, a language that probably very few people understand. Uh, to, I mean, this is ancient Hebrew. Uh, and it's been translated and translated and translated and adapted and translated. And yet, for me, the rhythm is still there. Not because somebody counted sort of the rhythmic feet of it, uh, like they were writing a poem, but just because it ebbs and it flows so beautifully and naturally. And that, for me, if I want to mirror this sense of creation, this way that God has created life um, for me, then where's the ebb and flow in my life? Where is the evening and the morning, the fourth day? And when I take this personally, uh, I know that certainly since COVID, I have tried to make sure I have evenings. Because the truth is, 
I kind of fallen into a habit where I'm working about seven days a week and I like it to a degree, but I try to make sure always that I have evening. And when things are going well for me, I make sure always that I have morning, which is, I mean, I get up in the morning, I drink my tea and I read the paper and I do the crossword. <sighs> Having done that, I'm now ready to go and work in the midst of the day. But I make sure that I have evening and I have morning. At the end of the day, I have evening and the morning and at the beginning of the day I have my morning and then there is the day where I work uh, and I find that I am happiest and most productive when I have that rhythm um, when I'm getting pressed and I'm in a rush okay then I can't do my morning stuff so I don't do the crossword and I don't get that done I don't have my tea I just boom hit it and go straight to work um, that's okay once and even twice but when you keep doing it Pretty soon you give up and you realize, I didn't just do a crossword anyway, it's just world ju word jumble. Um, but there's a rhythm that's lost. And yes, I can drink a cup of tea in my car as I scoot off somewhere, but there's a rhythm lost. Uh, I can eat a, eat a meal over a sink too if I'm really in a hurry, but there is a rhythm to sitting down, breathing, eating, drinking a rhythm. I think it's one of the reasons that some of us like formal dining. It forces us into it, even though we know, oh, I'm not a very formal guy. I'd just be happy in a chip truck. And yet when you just sit down and let the rhythm of a meal go, you just reconnect to, for me, the rhythm that's revealed here. There was evening, there was morning, the fourth day. I know I'm telling you more about me than you need to know. But I invite you to wonder a little bit about yourself and your rhythms. Do you have them? Did you ever have them? Do you want them? What's it like when you have rhythm? For me, this story just says that, that, that there is a rhythm to creation. There is a rhythm to life. And I recognize that very often I can fall out of rhythm. Doesn't mean I fall. I don't, I don't mean that I'm out of step. I may be that. I'm not worried about being in step with everybody. But I do worry about having a rhythm, my rhythm. Doesn't have to be yours, doesn't have to be anybody else, but where's my rhythm? You know, I just love, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. There's a language thing that happens too for me in this passage, um, changing gears entirely now. And I realize part of that comes from being a kid, uh, part of that comes from English, um, just the way it's translated. So uh, when I hear that God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves. The great sea monsters, oh my God, um, that's scary. Um, so I guess we're talking about, I don't know, the, the Loch Ness uh, monster, um, Godzilla, um, I, I don't know, um, sharks at least, um, uh, killer whales, I guess. Um, these would be the sea monsters, um, and, and that's, that's scary. Um, I also hear about these animals that creep um, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things. Um, ugh, I don't like creepy things, creepy crawly things or yuck. Well, on one hand, I recognize there's a translation piece here. So creepy things are things that, that walk on the ground or slither on the ground. Creeping is the word we use. Creep has come to mean a thing to me that it did not mean to the translator. Um, because creep, well, we avoid creeps. Creeps are not good. Creeps, if you're a creep, you want to learn to be better. Um, we disparage creeps. Um, but here we're just talking about something crawling along the ground. Got it. Sea monsters, what we're talking about is great, big, large things. Not monsters like Godzilla. Um, not monsters that, that threaten us. But it's funny how language sets us off. Um, so having said that, now I'm going to go back to the creepy and the sea monstery things and recognize that those things are also created by God. And there is something in that for me. So, no, I don't know that this is about creating Godzilla or the Loch Ness Monster. But sharks. I mean, boy, oh boy, when Shark Week hits TV, um, 
And I remember seeing like Jaws, and I didn't know that sharks were bad, but I never saw Jaws. They were pretty scary. And then everything about to do with sharks becomes frightening and terrifying, and sharks must be horrible. And of course, thank goodness some people are killing sharks. But that's... God created these creatures of the sea that we are calling monsters. Um, but when God created monsters, monsters are just big things in the sea. And they're not monstrous in terms of being a, a threat. They are part of creation. And those creepy things, and we go, oh, God, so I don't want creepy things. And yet they are also part of creation. For me, this is an invitation for me to think about the monsters, whether I'm talking about sharks or I'm talking about those that I have deemed as monstrous and therefore not part of my society. I use this to think about those that I am deemed creepy and therefore not part of my social group. There, for me, is an invitation in this, because of translation, um, to recognize that these things that I push away and reject are also wonderfully created by God. The same way that I am created by God. The same way that all those beautiful things that I love kittens and bunnies are created by god so are sharks show so are people who disagree with my politics so are criminals so are we all in that sense created and so i am invited to approach these um these creatures whether they're human or 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 something in the uh, in the broader animal kingdom but I am encouraged by this passage to, to approach these, these creatures with, with respect, with humility, recognizing that we are part of the same creation. And usually what happens with those monstrous things and creepy things is that I want to approach them um, aggressively. I want to approach them um, with scorn i want to approach them with vengeance i want to approach them all of those things um when i talk about uh remedy when i want to fix things what i mean is i want to get rid of them i don't want to help them fit into a world i'm part of i want to get them out of my world and so i wonder when i when i hear this passage i wonder if if the way that I treat and my society treats those who are on the outside, I wonder if we're not very, very wrong. I know it's naive, some will say, but we're all part of creation. And again, I pointed out that I know it's a translation piece, but I do think that God speaks to me through translations too and makes me wonder about great big monsters makes me wonder about creepy things um, is the best thing I can do to simply pen them in hoard them over there away from me um, or does that fracture creation and make things worse because what I notice is that God saw that it was good why can't I if I imagined, so I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna create a completely fictional character right now. I, uh, you, this, so this character is um, a, a criminal who has done a horrific thing. Whatever that horrific thing is, it's absolutely horrific. So if I need to uh, vent society's vengeance on that person, then I want them to be devastated i want them to to uh to shake in fear and weep in sorrow that they were such a such horrible creatures but will that restore creation is that really a remedy does that make anything better but if i imagine that this monstrous individual that there was a remedy that would bring us back together. Conditions might be different, but that we could actually be together. Might I approach it differently? 
if I felt my desire was to restore creation as opposed to chip away at it, would I do things differently as an individual and as a society? What would prisons look like if I was interested in restoring creation as opposed to chipping away that which is bad? Um, what would my family relationships look like, my friendships look like, my social relationships when there are people that ah, we're not, I don't speak to them? I don't know if you heard, but uh, no, anti-vaxxer, I, 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 can't, I can't talk to them. I'm done now. We fracture creation when we put people over there without any way for us to connect. Well, until they admit that they were terrible and wrong and come back asking for forgiveness. But God saw that it was good <laughs> before my judgment. So how do I remedy creation? This is the question that this passage asks of me. And it's all because that little translation piece, creepy and monstrous. Um, anyway, I can tell I'm going to go down another rabbit hole as well. So I think I'm going to stop there and leave that with you to wonder, though. Um, you know, in what we do, however we do it. And, and I know I have a variety of different, type, uh, different types of people who, who share these meditations with me. Uh, you know, I, parents and single people, and I've got doctors, and nurses, and teachers, and um, I got I got at least one cop that I know of. I've got a lawyer or two uh, who watch these. Um, if 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 our lives were really bent toward or motivated to to uh, to the re restoration of creation, up to the wholeness of creation, as opposed to the fracturing away and getting rid of the bad so that we can keep the best of what how would i act that's the invitation to me because i just keep hearing god saying it was good and god saw it was good god saw the monsters and they were good and god saw the creepy things and they were good um so i wonder if our goal was to heal creation as opposed to chip away and highlight the best of it how we might do our lives and our jobs differently. I'm not preaching at you. I'm not telling you you need to do it differently. I think that though this is an invitation um, to just wonder, just wonder. And even if, even if, if we uh, affirm, nope, I am doing it perfectly the way I'm happy the way I'm doing it, I've considered it. Uh, or in fact, I make a slight adjustment. I'm not talking about turning 180 degrees. I think that's what scripture is meant to do. It's meant to affirm that we're going on the right path or invite us to consider how we might do it a little bit differently or even choose a different path. I'm stopping there <laughs> before all of my friends quit their jobs and are living in my backyard going, well, Norm, let's start a commune. Because um, <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I'm going to offer a prayer because that's the only way to shut me up. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the reminder that creation is good. That your intent, your, your presence, your plan is beautiful. So God, even as we are drawn to the beautiful, let us not forget that your plan is broad and inclusive. That your sense of beauty is not as blinkered or limited as ours. God, help us to see the world and ourselves through your eyes. As beautiful. As good. God, thank you for this time to consider your word. And may all that we have engaged in today all that we have heard and discovered may it bring us closer to you we pray through the holy spirit and in jesus name amen well that's it for today but tomorrow well tomorrow 
humanity is created. So we'll see what happens then, won't we? Uh, until we do check in, thank you. Thank you for being here with me through this. Uh, these are early days, and I'm just figuring out how to wander my wander, wander and wander my way through this. Uh, and I'm really glad that you're uh, you're with me, and I look forward to the journey. God bless you. Please know that God sees you, God loves you, and God's love moves through you. See you tomorrow.